daily class in, in Brisbane. Um, and today we will talk about geology. Um, well, when, when Sebastian asked me for, for this webinar, I was just uh, thinking which information will be the more relevant information for you guys. Considering that um, uh, the group is more geologists and I am a petroleum engineer and I have been teaching well control for a couple of eight years now. And we will try to connect well control and geology. That's the main idea in this presentation. The main idea in this presentation is to use the knowledge about geology and make it relevant for well control. This presentation will be focused on well control issues, we will focus on well control uh, definitions. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much again, and thank you for your invitation, and very happy to be here. It just sits AN in Brisbane, Australia, and I'm very glad to have the chance to be with you guys. Now let's start sharing. The presentation now. Now you can see the presentation. Let me double check. Yeah, it's no wrong. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay, today we'll talk about the relative well in well control. Uh, it will cover uh, some well control definitions first. And during this definition, it will cover the definition of a kick and inflows the blowout and more definitions and more information regarding uh, primary well control actually. Next, we will cover formation pressure, the definition, and what is a formation pressure and how to calculate formation pressure using geologist data and use information from the well is charting. Um, and after that we're gonna we will go ahead with formation properties. Formation properties we will focus on formation permeability and formation porosity and how these formation properties are related to well control. Next we will move to Formation fracture pressure is on application of fracture pressure and formation pressure. Well, what we can see there is um, a reservoir is here, and if we have a hydrocarbon zone. It's important for us. It's very important, very relevant to know what is our formation pore pressure and formation fracture pressure. Let's get started with some definitions. The first definition we need to have clear is the definition of a kick. What is a kick? A kick is known as an intrusion of formation fluids into the well bore during a normal operation. Normal operation for us is drilling. An influx, well influx, the formation fluids that unintentionally flow into a well. It's very important to know what is unintentionally. Unintentionally means uh, that you don't want that this to happen. That's, that's the main idea. So you don't want to have an influence. A blowout. A blowout, an uncontrolled lead kick to the atmosphere 
or to another lower pressure subsurface formation. A blowout is when you are not able to control in formation fluid. A blowout um, is something, it's the worst thing that could happen in our oil and gas industry. It's something very, very bad. And my friends, all this information is related to API. So we are, have been taking the definition using API uh, recommended practice 59, the latest API 2018. Well, an inflows, an inflows, what is an inflows? An inflows can consist of gas, could be oil, could be water, or any combination of the three of them. An inflows usually form and it's locked in the annulus. So one of the things that we, during a well control, we assume the inflows is only the annulus. It is possible to have an inflows in the drill stream, the working stream, yeah, it's possible. But for make the things easier, we are just assuming the inflows is in the annulus, considering that the annulus is the provide the biggest area, the biggest flow area. Most often it's less dense than the drilling fluid. Um, drilling fluid, um, uh, water, water-based mat, um, could be a 10 ppg, and oil, gas, Oil usually is C7 ppg, gas 2 ppg, so it's less dense. And water it could be formation water. Gas migrate with the time up the wellbore through the buoyancy. So due to buoyancy, can ga gas can migrate up. So it's important we consider gas properties. Must be removed in a controlled manner. So we should co we should remove the gas using conventional methods, using um, some well control methods um, in order to maintain the integrity of the well. Fluids to flow. Okay, now, these two conditions for us to consider um, um, when the fluids need to flow. The first condition is the underbalance. The underbalance means the differential pressure. Fluids always flow from area of high pressure to low pressure. So the first condition for the fluids to flow is the underbalance. It's important we uh, have an underbalance, have enough underbalance to make the fluids to flow. And the second condition is a pathway, a path. A path is given by port to port communication, port to port communication within a formation. That's why for us it's relevant to talk about permeability. Apart from that, a uh, fluid could flow uh, when the cement with poor anti migrating properties. So that means the poor cement job. And in case we had some mechanical failure in the case in hunger or mechanical failure in the BOP stack. All right. Okay, what we can see here is uh, just again the two conditions. The first condition is we need an underbalance condition. And the balance condition is when, when we have here formation pressure and hydrostatic pressure. And formation pressure is higher than hydrostatic pressure. So one condition is the underbalance. And the second condition is enough permeability. Um, when, when we had another balance condition, when we actually lost our primary well control. Our primary well control means that our hydrostatic pressure is enough 
to control formation pressure. To prevent fluids movement into the well, we need to keep the pressure in the wellbore at least equal to the pore pressure. Okay, so my friends, let me go back to here. Um, what we have here is formation pore pressure, and we need to maintain the formation fluids in place to maintain formation fluids in the formation. So we need to apply some sort of bath pressure to keep these formation fluids here. This sort of bath pressure is known as a bottom hole pressure. So this bottom hole pressure should be equal or at least greater than equal, at least equal or greater than formation pore pressure. That's the way we maintain this formation fluids in place. Again, back to the previous definition, what is underbalance and now introducing overbalance. Okay, when we speak about overbalance is when our formation fluid is excited by the hydrostatic pressure. However, as we can see here, too much overbalance uh, would be very bad because too much overbalance can lead to fracture, uh, fracture in the formation, low circulation, and too much problems. And the other way around is underbalance. When your hydrostatic pressure is not enough to counterbalance formation pressure, can lead to a wellbore collapse or formation is start kicking. So the main idea for us is to be between um, formation pressure and fracture pressure. So too much overbalance, too much overbalance like here, is when our hydrostatic pressure overcome form a, a formation fracture pressure. And we are actually breaking down the formation. And when our over underbalance when we had underbalance condition, our hydrostatic pressure is not enough to counterbalance formation pressure and formation start kicking or the well bore can collapse. Example for overbalance. What we see here is hydrostatic pressure given by the mat equal 6,200 PSI. Formation pressure given by the formation is 6,000 PSI. The TBD is 10,000 feet. Okay, hey, my friends, and what I want to, to say now is get ready with a calculator because um, during this class or during this presentation, uh, I will ask you to perform some calculations, get ready with a calculator on hand, please. Okay, let's, let's go on. 6,200 wellbow pressure is greater than 6,000 PSI. So our condition now is overbalance. Overbalance in terms of PSI is 200 PSI overbalance. And if we can express this overbalance in terms of PPG, it is just getting 200 PSI divided by this conversion factor or this constant and divided by the given TBD. So I will ask you is you have a calculator on hand, let's perform this calculation. 200 PSI divided by the constant divided by 
10,000 feet. So the answer will be here 0.38 ppg. Really good if you get a calculator and you can start working on that. Okay. Primary well control is preventing influx by keeping hydrostatic pressure equal or greater than formation pressure. Hydrostatic pressure here is 5,200 and formation pressure equal to 4,650. So what's going on is our hydrostatic pressure is enough to counterbalance formation pressure. So um, we express in a overbalanced condition in terms of PSI or in terms of PPG. When hydrostatic pressure is enough to maintain formation pressure control, it, uh, we are creating or keeping the, the primary well control. Well control is, is just about um, controlling formation pressure. So that's, that's why it's very relevant, it's very important for us to know what is formation pressure and to understand geological data and geophysical data regarding geology, regarding uh, the formations is, is quite important for us. Yeah, because that's all it is, controlling formation pressure, controlling, keeping the formation fluids there. And when we are producing, producing um, through, the, through the way it should be produced. Let's continue. Okay, now let's talk about formation pressure definitions and calculation. Today we will cover what is normal, abnormal, and subnormal formation pressure. Okay, now what we see here is the Rocco matrix and the formation fluid. Row matrix that not support all full load for the overboarding. So the overboarding is the weight of the rock above the formation of interest. Our overboarding now, according to Tarsagi, we equal effective vertical stress, vertical vertical stress given by the rock matrix plus four bridge. Overboarding now is um let me, let me make it bigger if I can make it bigger. Overboarding now is 9,000 psi pushing down and pushing up. We have hydrostatic pressure, uh, we have a formation pore pressure, 5,000 psi pushing up plus the rock matrix. So we have an equilibrium, natural equilibrium. Um, gathering overboarding data and uh, can help us in the vertical stress can help us to estimate formation pore pressure. What we can see here, formation pore pressure is not constant, it's, it's can vary from formation to another formation. So for us, it's very relevant to know when you have high formation pore pressure and when pore pressure is very low, because and we need to control this formation pore pressure normally using hydrostatic pressure. So it's important for us to know how the formation pore pressure chain. And also it's very relevant to know which indications, which warning signs are tell us in that formation pore pressure is changing formation pressure could be increasing, on formation pressure could be decreasing. So having all of this information is very important for us, it's very relevant during the drilling stage. Okay, so formation pore pressure and fracture pressure define our usable bad window, which is a mod weight. 
our usable malware is the malware we use and it's limited by the formation fracture pressure right the ceiling and the floor is given by the formation pore pressure so our usable malware is is the malware we can use and to keep it ourselves safe keeping all the operations safe preventing going under balance so going below formation for pressure and too much malware could breaking down the formation especially when running high creating mass surge pressure against the formation so the usable malware is could be could be good to know in order to maintain uh, the operation safe during a um, tripping operation we usually calculate what is the expected surge pressure surge pressure is the is the pressure that the bottom of the well feel when we are running in hold swap pressure is the form is the pressure that the bottom of the well feel when we are pulling out the hole when we are uh, pulling out our pipe we can swap we can swap the well in uh, our bottom hole pressure can drop so when we are running in hole we can increase the pressure and bottom hole pressure can increase so it's it's important we understand this pressure and how we can keep ourselves in the safe area. Again, okay, um, this information is taken from API. This information is good, very relevant for us because what we can see here, formation pore pressure and formation fracture pressure. So this diagram explain uh, one sec. In this diagram, one second. Oh, okay, fi finally. Okay. What we have here is formation pore pressure and the design of fracture gradient. So when we are uh, in planning a well, we should be planning when and uh, where actually we will set the case in the stream. So knowing formation pore pressure information fracture pressure give us the idea give us the the relevant uh, information part of the relevant information we need to say the properly the the casing in designing the well actually will tell us how many casing strings are required so we start designing the casing stream based on the uh, pore pressure at the end going this way when you finally get the, the fracture pressure which is here so we have one a uh, casing to be set at about let me go back to here so about uh 11 could be could be 1100 11 thousand feet could be said the seven uh, five eight a casing um, about nine nine thousand seven hundred could be the other one nine five eight casing and about we can see a seven a close to seven hundred seven thousand sorry uh, the eleven three quarter inch casing so casing pressure and formation pore pressure and fracture pressure help us 
to design, actually design how many sections we will be drilling the well. The information is given by the API 65, this diagram, I found a very, very uh, nice diagram, very good one in order to, uh, to know where is, will be located the, the, the case. So is this is another application, no information pressure and fracture pressure. Apart from that, in the diagram, we can see some dot line, the mat way. So we are keeping some over balance and the design fracture gradient. So the mat way between this um, minimum mat way and the maximum mat way will be, again, our usable mat way. So let's say we add a, a 6,000 feet, our usable malware will be between close to 9 ppg and according to the chart, the maximum will be 15 ppg. So usable malware will be between formation pore pressure and formation fracture pressure. So this is our usable malware for each section of the wall. The information of the working window will be fine in the well program. The well program gives you all the information about the working window, gives you the information and when and you, will, should, you should have a, the mat way and by how much will be the minimum and how much will be the maximum mat way. So if you want to know what is the minimum and maximum mat way for a specific section, just go to the where program. Formation pore pressure. Formation pore pressure sometimes refers as a pore pressure or just formation pressure. Is the pressure of the fluid inside the porous space of the rock. So here we have the fluid. Uh, the definition of formation pore pressure is very important. We should keep, a, a, a keep that in mind. And Formation pore pressure is the, form, is the pressure exerted by the fluids in the, in the pore space of rock. Now we will talk about what is normal formation pore pressure. Normal formation pore pressure uh, is the hydrostatic pressure of fluids, assuming that the formation fluid is water. So normal uh, formation pressure is independent of the overboarding. Again, what is overboarding? Overboarding, uh, we, we we get, went back to Tarsagi, and overboarding is the pressure from the weight of both of a line rock and the fluid, uh, uh, fluid it's contained. Overboarding is just the pressure of the formation above the formation of interest. Some definitions, API defines formation pressure as a pressure equal to the pressure exerted by the vertical column of water with salinity normal for the geographic area. When I said normal for the geographic area is that in different areas in the world, we could have different salinity, therefore different formation for pressure. Formation pore pressure can be different in Gulf of Mexico, can be different in Australia, can be different in the Middle East, North Sea, China. So well, why can it be different? Because salinity could be different for that geographic area. Normal formation pressure is hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure of what? Hydrostatic pressure of water requires communication with surface for sure. IWCF, IWCF, what is IWCF? International Well Control Forum. And uh, I've been teaching well control for IWCF eight, eight years now. And well, IWCF is a recognized well control organization, 
organization accreditation body. And they assume a normal for pressure gradient, usually between the gradient of fresh water. Fresh water is saline, but low saline, salinity contents. When you talk about salinity, we talk about chloride, bromide, sodium, and many salts. And normal gradient of formation fluids in the Gulf of Mexico. So in the Gulf of Mexico, the normal formation pressure gradient is equal to 0.465 PSI per foot. So, um, the formation fracture gradient is usually between 0.433 and 0.465. If our formation fracture gradient is between these two numbers, we are we consider to be normal. NORSOC, NORSOC, what is NORSOC? NORSOC is Norwegian standard. They use 0.445 PSA per foot as a normal. It's commonly used and assumed as a gradient of seawater. Seawater is for uh, offshore applications. Okay, what is abnormal? Abnormal is just um, greater than normal, and normal greater than hydrostatic pressure of uh, water for formation water. So IWC had said that is a pressure higher than normal, so higher than 0.465. API said that subnormal. Subnormal is less than normal. So what is subnormal pressure? It's a pressure lower than 0.433. And what we have here in this very nice diagram, we have what is formation pore pressure and depth. Formation pore pressure when it's subnormal or is normal, abnormal. This is fresh water. We are using for fresh water for sure. Normal is between again 0.433 and 0.465. Above that, it's considered to be abnormal. Below that, it's considered to be subnormal. And is the fracture pressure? Fracture pressure obviously higher than formation pressure. The pressure that causes the formation to fracture because in low circulation, because uh, and can lead to an underground blowout. Overboarding, overboarding pressure gradient usually is as soon as a one psi per foot uh, for land drilling operations. Is the pressure that is caused by the weight of all overlying rocks. So the weight of rock above formation of interest. In this diagram, in this um, um, which are we can um, have a lot of information what is formation pressure what is fracture pressure what is overboarding great and when formation pressure should be considered to be subnormal uh, uh, normal and abnormal well for us in well control operations what is normal formation for pressure? Okay, one of the main causes of around the world, normal formation for pressure is when we have under compaction in shale. So this is the normal behavior with shale, sand. So the normal behavior is when um, is more cup of rock above when we say when we compress, the rock is compressed by more rocks above that formation of interest. What's going on with the fluid? The fluid is squeezed out and try to get out of the formation, which is normal. What's going on here? And the compaction. And now, when the fluid is very compacted, the rock is very compacted, 
what's going on if the fluid had a flow path the fluid try to get out this is the normal behavior normal and in case the fluid has a seal and cannot get out so that fluid is trapped when the fluid is trapped and it's difficult to get out therefore will be uh, will be considered to be under compaction under compacted and the fluid plus this uh, more cup of rocks will be in a abnormally compre compressed so and uh, my friends too much pressure over this fluid plus the effects of temperature cause the flow is to expand so that's increased formation pore pressure the red line here is formation pore pressure the green the the black the black line is the overboarding so what we see here is the overboarding stress and fracture uh, formation pressure formation pore pressure increase so formation pore pressure now is telling me the the fluids here is supporting more than the effective stress remember overboarding equal effective stress plus pore pressure so the formation pressure is increasing and you have more pressurized fluids support supporting the overboarding This is the normal behavior and when something is not normal if the formation is not permeable or fluid is trapped like here then any increase in compaction or movement can result in formation pressure higher than normal so what's going on here is these formations are trapped and more fluids and more formations more cup of rubs are set above the formation of interest and the fluid cannot get out because there is a seal here so the fluids now will be supporting more and more a uh, overlying weight weight so the more weight the fluid has to support the more pressure will be in this fluid below the barrier this is the below the barrier fluids below the barrier is abnormally pressurized the fluid supporting some weight more than expected or the overboarding not the fluid is not not only supporting the the column of the fluid itself is supporting the overboarding why because the fluid that was here trapped couldn't migrate couldn't get out it's trapped Another way for creating or abnormal uh, formation pressure, we are talking about abnormal. Why abnormal? Because it's higher than normal. Higher than normal is relevant for us in well control because we need to control formation pressure. Again, what is well control? Well control is about controlling formation pressure. To go back to here, we uh, for me, let's, let's give us an example and it's faulting. What's going on with faulting? Formation A, formation A at 10,000 feet is normally pressurized. So formation A using the normal formation pressure gradient 0.465 formation pressure equal 4,650 PSI. So it's normal formation for pressure here. What's going on here? Uplisting or faulted. So now uh, these formations moves up and part of the formation moves up. However, when the formation moves up, maintain the same formation pressure. But now you will find this formation pressure at a lower depth. At how much? At 8,000 feet. 
So you will see 4,650 PSI at 8,000 feet. Previously, for controlling a well at 10,000 feet, you just need 90 PG. So my friends, I calculated again. So if you want to get 90 PG here, it's only taking this gradient 0.465 PSI per foot divided by the constant. The constant is 0 0.052. So you get 8.9 and you usually round it up to 90 PG. So controlling a 10,000 feet formation A, you just need 10 PPG. But now you need to control formation B. Formation B, 4,650 PSI at 8,000 feet. So controlling this formation, you need 0.581 PSI per foot in terms of gradient. In terms of PPG, you need 11.2. See my friends, 0.581 is greater than the normal 0.465. That's why we consider that faulting could lead to a normal formation for pressure. All right. Well, we are, we are running out of time. Sorry for that. It's, 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 it's quite good to, it's quite exciting talking about these topics. Another thing to consider is faulted. Um, well, faults may also cause a normal formation for pressure when creating a communication. So the formation A is now communicating for formation B. So this communication um, uh, pressurized formation B. So the deeper, higher formation for pressure will pressurize the, the lower, the shallow formation here. Mm -hmm. So that communication made the shallow formation um, normally pressurized. Again, same thing here. Higher formation for pressure is communicated formation formation. The higher pressure formation zone is communicated with this uh, uh, shallow formation. So we'll chart the zone and the fluids are migrating. And you will see formation pressure higher than expected. Well, this, this thing could happen, my friends. And what's going on here? The well, they say this is this well A has been abandoned. We had some flops here. And probably due to a poor cement job, plus on casing failure, could be corrosion or something and make it create a hole in the casing. And now, poor cement job and plus a casing failure. And this formation uh, has not been isolated. Uh, we don't have any cement block here or something. Now the formation fluids migrate up and start charging this shallow formation. When you will be drilling, the, the surrounding area, really drilling a hole close to here, you will see um, formation higher than expected. So this could be a cross flow or it could be referred as an underground blowout. An underground blowout is just when you have a cross flow and you're just charging one formation. A, one, you are charging one formation from another formation, which is at higher pressure. So bear in mind that it's, it's possible that this happens. It's possible that these kind of uh, consequences of a poor abandon, 
poor cement jobs and lack of integrity in the world. Lack of integrity means that the barriers and these mechanical barriers are not working properly, means that this well has been, has, ha, haven't been isolated well and the formation fluids can even create problems. So don't assume that you are abandoned a well and you have nothing to do with the well. So if the proper abandon job, a proper a proper cement job, it can lead to much more problems. Okay. Um, what we have here, we had uh, another type of uh, formation uh, for pressure could be abnormal, could be abnormal when uh, some hydrocarbon could be gas in this case, but it could be gas or oil is surrounding, uh, we have hydrocarbon here on top of some water. So remember that when we assume normal formation fluid, it will be water, but now it has gas or could be oil. So because of the gas in the reservoir is less than the water, gas 2 ppg, water 8.3, 8.4 ppg, the surrounding formation on top, the formation on top of the reservoir will be abnormally pressure. So this is an exercise for performing some calculations later on if probably Sebastian or somebody can share for you guys this presentation. You can do this calculation very easily, just using uh, what is normal. Normal is at, at the at the bottom of the reservoir cap is six thousand feet, six thousand times 0.465. Give you what is normal, and you can calculate the hydrostatic pressure of the gas column. Easy, just uh, we have a thousand feet of gas times 0.1 psi per foot, 0.1 times 1,000 gives you 100, 100 psi gas cap. And getting this formation at the bottom, minus 100 psi of hydrocarbon will give you, what is the hydrostatic pressure, what is the formation pressure at the, at the top? So, and for sure, the formation pressure at the top will be higher than the normal, 0.465. So we, that's why when we are start drilling and we uh, have some hydrocarbons, gas oil could be at a normal pressure. Well, uh, we have been talking about what is abnormal, but it's important we talk about what is subnormal. Subnormal formation pressure. A depleted reservoir. What is that depleted reservoir? is when the well has been producing for a long time and formation pressure starts dropping. Now formation pressure is less than what is normal, it's less than the 0.433 PSI per foot. So the depleted formation um, requires us to produce oil and hydrocarbons, oil and gas to use some artificial production systems uh, to compensate the lack of formation for pressure. So it's normal during the production operation and production stage of the well that the formation pressure are dropping, dropping anytime we are producing fluid and the well will be depleted sometime later. What is normal in some areas? In some areas where it's normal and we have uh, different areas and different formation for pressure gradient. We don't have a, well, we have Gulf of Mexico, 0.465 again. That's the number used by IWCF. And we have some, some areas in the United States, 0.433, China, 0.452 different areas. So um, my friends, it's important you use what is normal for that geographic area and what is normal for you. Um, 
Okay, well, let's let's finalize this presentation using this uh, example to calculate what is formation pressure. Uh, formation pressure can be calculated using the data when we have a, a well is closed when we have the closing conditions. So what what is here? Okay hydrostatic pressure, assuming that the influx is only in the annulus, our hydrostatic pressure, which is clean, is the hydrostatic pressure in the delay strain. So our mat weight is 10 ppg, the well is at 10,100 feet, and hydrostatic pressure gradient, and the gas gradient is 0.1 psi per foot. What we need to do is calculate the formation pressure. It's very easy this calculation. It's very easy to do it. Only let's get the hydrostatic pressure in the drill pipe plus short in the drill pipe pressure. So this is a formula used by IWCF and most of the well control schools around the world. We use short in the pipe pressure plus hydrostatic pressure in the drill stream. Why using in the drilling stream? Because we are assuming we had no influx in the angulus. We are only assuming we had influx in the angulus. We are and the drill pie is clean. So let's do it together, my friends, before going. Hydrostatic pressure will be 0 0.052, remember? 0 0.052 times the TBD times the malware. That will give us hydrostatic pressure. We just add in short entry pipe pressure. And formation pressure will be 6,000 feet. Um, okay, that's the last thing because we are running out of time actually. We are we start at five minutes later. I can I will take you five minutes more. And before going is uh, we need to talk about what is formation permeability and what is formation porosity most of reservoir rock have both porous and permeable uh, they allow hydrocarbons to collect inside them so this is porous porosity porosity and to pass through then permeability so it's important to know what is we have is porous spaces and also we have the the flow path the flow path is given by the permeability and the amount of void and volume of porous spaces is given by the porosity. Porosity is the percent of the volume occupied by solids. These spaces are called porous. And porous can be filled with formation fluid that could be water, could be oil, or gas. Porosity is measured by percent. One sec, I have a question. Finally, that's good. Okay, um, George, you ask him how, how, how can we recognize taking a kick before before the before can be developed in a blowout? Well, there is a lot of warning signs, uh, George to recognize we are taking a kick. One of the warning signs, and um, that's, that's another topic to talk, George, the warning signs, but uh, let me give you some of them. One of these is when you find an, a normal uh, fluid that is flowing from the well. So remember when you have flow in, flow out, when you flow out, it's more than the flow in, it's telling you something something is coming, that you have more flow than expected. Is that one normal uh, kick indicator? A second kick indicator, George, is when um, you have some pit gain. Pit gain means your volume on the times increase higher than expected. And another kick indicator is when you stop pumping and there was still flow. So you stop pumping and the well is still flowing, it's telling you for sure you are taking a kick. 
So that's the time you need to secure the well and close the well using the appropriate sharing procedure before the kick will develop in a blowout. Um, okay, and the second question is already answered. How uh, you're asking me about how to prevent this kick to uh, to reach surface. The way to do it is just shutting the well, shutting the well, and controlling the kick, removing the clip, removing the kick in a controlled manner from from the bottom to surface. That's that's the main idea, George. I hopefully, I had answer your question. Let's continue before, let's continue that one. Porosity and permeability. Permeability measure how fast or easily the fluids can move through a rock. Gas needs less permeability to move through a rock than oil. Permeability is related to porosity, usually. And in general, the higher porosity, higher permeability. So permeability, Could be higher, lower. When you have a low permeability rock, it's often called a tight, tight formation. Permeability uh, tell you the four spaces must be connected. So permeability is just measuring the communication between the four spaces of rock. Permeability is measured by Darcy's and or milli Darcy's. The sun has a permeability approximately about one Darcy. It's around that. Shale has less permeability than sun. Let's finish with this. How does the permeability affect well control? Permeability, okay. This is a rock property. So my friends, as you are, you are geologists, it's important before going to have the last message from this presentation, permeability, porosity, formation pressure, fracture pressure, and how this impact well control operations. Fluid from permeability affects well control issues. Fluid from highly permeable rock can enter in the well bore at a faster rate. This can result in a greater key volume. So the more permeable the formation, the higher the volume. The more permeable the formation, the higher the wellbore in case in pressure. So the bigger the influx. The bigger the influx means that you lost more hydrostatic pressure in the annulus. Therefore, your formation, your case in pressure, your surface case in pressure will be higher than expected. That makes, that makes a kick much more difficult to handle, more difficult to control a kick. And also increase the danger to personal equipment and environment. But shorting pressure will be stabilized faster. So the, in, the fact that your permeability is higher than higher than in a tight formation, you have very good permeability. The time to take the, the pressure to stabilize is faster. So it's good that as soon as you close the well, your numbers, you will see the uh, stabilized number, the stabilized pressure on surface. So the type of the influx has to do with permeability, my friends, again. So permeability impacts a lot, well control. And the type of the influx depends on production productivity, so permeability, the quantity of underbalance, and time. So the quantity on the balance means the amount of differential pressure between formation pressure and hydrostatic pressure. The time, the time the rig crew takes to close the well and the formation permeability has to do with uh, the great degree of communication in the porous space of rock. So uh, what, what we have here are different, uh, two different wells and in this horizontal wall, assuming the same permeability in both the scenarios, in this horizontal wall, we expect more 
more inflows because the net pay area is greater than this vertical wall. Permeability also impact, uh, as I said before, how fast the pressure to stabilize. So if you had a, a formation with high permeability for, for you will be, um, won't take too much time for the pressure build up. All we had here, we had two lines, the red one and the blue one. The, the red one is the casing pressure, surface casing pressure, and the blue one is surface drip by pressure. The two scenarios with high permeability and low permeability. In area of high permeability, the stabilization can be few minutes. Can be few minutes, can take five, three minutes, 10 minutes, not too much. In many ROPS areas, can take up to 30 minutes or more. So the low the permeability made it made difficult or take more time actually to know what is the stabilized pressure. So the, the drilling crew should be able to that and understanding permeability, formation permeability, help us to identify the correct number when the pressure is stabilized. Identify the correct number is very relevant for the well control operation. And the, that number, a stabilization number, when the drip pipe pressure is stable, in case in pressure should be stable before preparing our program, before preparing our program to kill the well. So that's the last question we are going to have. Assuming we we'll, we we'll close the well at ten uh, at ten a.m. and now it's ten thirty. So what will be the short end of the pipe pressure, my friends? Short end of the pipe pressure. We we'll start measuring the drip pipe pressure. Drip pipe pressure is the the blue one. In case in pressure, which is the red one taking measurements any every five, five, five minutes, taking measure, taking readings. So we can check that after 10, 15, pressure increased by the same amount. Now it's increasing by a 10 PSI, it's increasing by 10 PSI. So it's telling me that gas is start migrating up. So the number that we'll use for the well program will be 400 PSI. So 400 PSI will be my short end pipe pressure and my stabilized short end casing pressure equal 500 PSI. So the first part of the pressure stabilization, surface pressure stabilizations has to do with permeability. Again, permeability is very important and the second part will be gas migration. So for us, identify these numbers is, has a, is paramount important during well control operation. So I think this is all, this, we just covered an hour. I don't want you to get tired, my friends, uh, too much things. And you have another question. How can I know if a pore pressure and fracture is adequate during drilling? Well, you go in this has to do with with the information that we have from the formation you go the the more information that you have from the formation the more information that you have from the wells around and will be the best thing so to be honest uh, to know and to know the area it takes time to know the area it takes time drilling and takes time for leak of testing takes time for uh, getting the appropriate information but drilling just one well probably won't be enough so your physical and geological data is the best thing that you can do or the best thing that you can do if you had the time before producing is doing a drill string test. 
I wonder if you have here about drill stint test. Drill stint test help us to measure what is the reservoir pressure and for using leak of test, you can measure what is the formation fracture pressure. So you have formation fracture pressure is okay from a leak of test or FIT formation integrity test and pore pressure and just running memory gauges and during a drill swing test could be useful for knowing and the relevant data. Also, you can what you can do is doing some logging. So there is, I think that is there are some logs available uh, for measuring formation pressure pressure. So that can give you a good understanding what is the data you expected. Okay, what and what kind of rock is more common a key? Well, sands in all the rock that well. Uh, George, for rocks, you should have a, you should have a, enough, the rock that you should have a fluids, formation fluids, sand, for example, and, and the, the imbalance. The imbalance means the pressure, you hydrostatic pressure is less than the formation pressure. The this type of rocks. So, we usually in this oil field, we just talk about sedimentary rocks. We just cover that sands, and but but we ha we can have a kick in in the sedimentary rock. I think so. That's the best answer for you. So my friends, I think is this is all. I'm just waiting for more questions. If you happen to have now. Um, very, very, uh, very thankful for having this chat, having this opportunity and to talk to you and I hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me go back to here. Uh, everyone, we must say thank you to you for giving us your time. <laughs> no worries, I'm happy to share with you <laughs> uh, it was amazing, really. It was great. It was very instructive. I must say thank you to you. <laughs> it was really yeah. Great. Just the first thing doing this Saturday. <laughs> from here, just waking up for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's on Friday. It's a great thing for Friday night. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. And uh, once again, I really would like to say thank you. It was really good. Uh, thank you in the name of all APG Unibega, and it was really educative, really instructive. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I feel <laughs> a little bit sorry. We didn't cover all the material I was intending to cover. It was too much, and actually, it's very excited. Uh, <laughs> when it comes to well control, I, I really get very excited about talking uh, about formation pressure, fracture pressure, and everything. It's, it's very good. Mm -hmm. yeah. I really appreciate this chance. I do appreciate that and happy to have this, uh, these people around me. And so uh, the material will be available for you guys in any time. Uh, thank you. We can do another webinar if you want to finish all this. Yeah. To Plenty available for you. I'm happy to share with you. If you have any question, just let me know. You have my details. Yeah. And thank you very much again. Have a <laughs> great have, have a great weekend, Friday in, in yeah. Brazil. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and guys, I want to invite you all to uh, there's one thing I want to invite you all to our next webinar. Uh, we'll, our next web webinar will be in Spanish and uh, will be about intro Introducción a la Estereotigrafía Sequencial. I'm sorry for my Spanish, it's not so good. <laughs> uh, and we'll be with uh, Nicole, she's a geologist from uh, Buenos Aires University. And we'll be on the next Friday, 9, 
19, June 19 at, at, at the same time as this one. <laughs> and I'm, as we already did the, the questions, so if someone has an, some questions, you can send it. <laughs> it was really good. Uh, uh, you're receiving a lot of good comments. <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm happy for that. Yeah. Yeah. Gracias, Gabriel. Tuvo muy buena la presentación. Muchas gracias. Thank you. A ti. Thank you. 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 Será introducción a la eh, perdón, eh, introducción a la fotografía secuencial. Va a ser por una chica geóloga de la Universidad de Buenos Aires. Entonces, eh, pues los esperamos aquí a la misma hora. Ya, ¿no? yeah, this. And guys, uh, if you notice this uh, this presentation, it was recorded and then we're gonna posted on our channel in on YouTube. So if you want to see again, please check there. On AAPG UNBH is our channel on YouTube. And there there's a, the other presentations. They are in Portuguese. And if you if you know Portuguese, we'll be glad. I would glad if you uh, see it. It was really nice. And once again, I must just say thank you, Gabriel. Thank you for your time. And thank, thank you, you all, your, guys. Thank you for you guys. That's it. See ya. See ya, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>